Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the first episode of Kimboology. How are y'all doing out there? Oh my God. I can't believe I decided to actually go through with this. Um, I'm obsessed with podcasts. Obsessed. I listen to a lot of podcasts every day. I listen to podcasts. So um, this was really something I'm like, you know what? I got a lot of shit to say. Let me go ahead and make my own. So um, for y'all listening to this bullshit, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to have a little bit of a something to talk to y'all. The world is a fucking mess. Let's just all agree there. Um, but yeah, but we're going to try to have positivity, um, try to seek, you know, some sort of light in the dark because it's easy to be negative right now with everything fucking going on. So it's a lot harder to be positive. So let's, um, I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to do that. And one of my ways to do this is to do this podcast. So I am here um, with my editor slash partner slash producer, Rick Dog. Say hello. Screen. He's in the background. Hey. I don't know if you heard him in the back. So um, he's going to be my producer. And yeah, so we set up this little ghetto ass stage or studio in my my place, you know, foam on the walls and shit. But you know, we're going to get it popping. It'll be fun. So um, the first segment um, that I'm super passionate about and will I like to I'm going to try to incorporate every week for you guys is sexy sustainability. Um, the world is falling apart. Mother Nature hates us. We literally just got through with like eight tornadoes coming down in Chicago um, the other day. Um, some people don't have power still. So that's a tell, like a huge sign that the world, um, we need to help the world. So I want to make sure that I do my part and I'm going to do a little research every week and trying to find little fun ways to save the planet. So um, this week I'm focusing on these plastic bags, which I fucking hate so, 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 so much. And with the world of Rona and COVID-19, um, a lot of stores are not allowing people to bring their own bags in which is really, really sad because that means more plastic bags in the world. Um, and those motherfuckers are just, they stay in the world. Like, they don't fucking break down. Like, they just take up the planet. Um, so there's a, a return. So if you go to Jewel, the store Jewel, um, you know, they're everywhere in front, around Chicago. Um, they have these recycle, like, you can return um, plastic bags um, to any Jewel that you see it's usually in the front when you first walk in on the left side or the right side um so they can recycle the plastic bags so um I think that's awesome um I think we should all try to do our part so I know we've had a influx of influx of many fucking plastic bags at the crib so I know a lot of you do too so if at least if you could just try to you know take those bags and take them to your local jewel to recycle them, that would be really, really helpful, and it'll help save the planet. So um, another dope place that I love to shop at is called Fruitful Yield. Um, it's like a small, um, smaller Whole Foods, I guess, if you want to say. There's not many of them. Um, I see them a lot more in the suburbs. Um, the lo- most, I guess the most local one to Chicago is probably the one in Elmwood Park. Um, that's the one I go to. I love that one. And they're awesome because... When you shop there and you get the bags from them, their bags are not made of plastic. Um, so, you know, I, I went there one day and I was like, they were like, hey, here's a plastic bag. I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm I'm trying to cut down on my plastic um, carbon footprint. And then so they were like, no, no, don't worry about that. This is made of cornstarch. It's biodegradable and it breaks down um, and, you know, into the, in the planet. So you don't have to worry about that. So I was like, fuck yeah, that's dope. So I grabbed that plastic bag and I got the fuck out of there. I mean, sorry, not plastic. Um, they're biodegradable bags. So yeah, so definitely think about that. It's a really dope place. They have all your hippy dibby fucking, you know, nutrients and vitamins and eps and salts and honeys and oils and shit there. Um, not a lot of groceries, but they have some. Um, we get a few things there. Um, we try to patronize them and try to shop there when we can. Um, and yeah, the bags there are environmentally safe so go ahead and patronize any fruitful yield with comfort so go ahead and do that so yeah that's today's sexy sustainability so hope you guys really do um you know take your plastic bags of jewels and go shop at fruitful yield and use their bags because 
I love them because they support the planet. All right, enough of this hippie shit. Let's talk about what I feel like a lot of people want to talk about, which is where the fuck have I been, right? Um, Now, I since COVID-19 has started, I have taken a hiatus off of Instagram. Um, I don't have shit ton of followers. You know, I got like, I had like 4,000 or so followers on Instagram. So um, I wasn't popping or anything like that, but um, I have been off of Instagram for quite some time, probably since April that I actually last um, logged in. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. So it's been great. Uh, It's been fucking awesome. I mean, I do miss parts of it, but I just, the reason I got off of Instagram was just because I've been fine. I was finding that when I would go on there, I would be leaving, I would be taking the energy away from Instagram. Like it was super toxic for me. Um, Like I would leave there and be like feeling like shit. Like, why is it that I go on Instagram, scroll through the feed, do the thing, you know, whatever, and then I leave here feeling like shit? You know what I mean? So, like, I just was hating that I would feel that way every time I would go on Instagram. And, um, you know, it was April, you know, so everybody was super still, like, worried about COVID and not really knowing what the fuck this virus was meaning to people and what it was doing to us. So, um, yeah, every time I would go on there, I just would feel like, bad energy, just, just super, super, it would be weighing heavy on me. So I decided to just, I was like, you know, fuck this, you know, before I was on, um, before I left, you know, I did a couple of yoga classes via live and shout out to y'all. Cause literally I got so much love from the yoga class, those yoga classes I did. Thank you so much. If any of you guys are listening that attended my yoga classes that I um, went live on, um, or, and also sent me love donations. Like, thank you. Thank you so much. Like you have no idea how much that gave me just like, like I just felt so loved. And I also felt just very, like, it was very humbling to know that y'all gave a shit, you know, (laughs) or y'all even wanted to sit there and cut up with me and do some yoga and twerk and drink wine. It was cute, you know? Um, so I really, really appreciate that. So anybody that was, um, a part of that, I love (laughs) y'all. Um, y'all the shit and y'all really helped out a a broke bitch. So thank you so much. Um, so yeah, but shortly after that, I was just like, you know what? I don't feel good going on here. You know, like why the fuck am I going on here if I don't feel good about it? You know? So yeah, it's been, it's August now. I'm still not on, but you know what? Um, I want to start this platform, um, with Kimboology and I will be returning to IG very soon. Um, mostly um, to kind of get this podcast up and going and starting to create a um, relationship with the podcasters out there and the listeners. And um, yeah, you know, obviously social media is really, really important for anybody that's in the creative well world and spectrum. And so um, I'm not stupid. Like I understand that's super important. But you know what? In this time, we have to also give our give each other grace and realize that these times are very, just very, very, it's just tough. You know, it's tough for everybody. So if do whatever you need to do to feel better, you know, if that means taking a social media break, if that means going for a walk, meditating, um, stepping away from loved ones. Like, you know, I've actually had, you know, a few people like had breakups, you know, unfortunately. And I've also had people that found love, you know, I've some from my really close friends, they're like, I, I got me a man, I got me a lady. Like, I'm like, okay, you know, like, how the fuck did that work with COVID? But, hey, you know, I'm here for it, you know. Y'all get your uh, get your love on, get your uh, quarantine love on. And then I've had people that, you know, have ended, you know, relationships, long-term relationships, short-term relationships. It's tested, you know, everybody's um, relationships, family, friends, everything, you know, loved ones. Um, you know, I know personally with me and my partner, you know, we've been, we've been quarantined since March and it's made us a lot stronger. So definitely, definitely has a positive, you know, quarantine, quarantining, if that's a fucking word, um, with somebody or people or multiple people, families or whatever have you has pluses and, you know, has minuses. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, whatever you need to do in this climate, go for it. I feel like it's super, super important to think about our mental health right now because 
um, this shit's not done. I don't know. I mean, we've been opening, you know, Chicago's up and popping in some areas. You know, I know we've been kind of like, you know, we've taken a step back in Chicago um, and um, kind of like closed the bars and the indoors and things like that again, um, limited gym classes and things like that. Um, but this shit hasn't changed, guys. You know, like since March, nothing's changed. We don't still have, we still have no vaccine. Um, yeah. So just be very, very cautious and do whatever you got to do to survive, you know? Um, yeah. And so I have, yeah. So goodbye to Instagram has been something that has been tough just because, um, so my main page that I was using was Kimbo Pole. Um, so if you don't know me and this is your first time listening and you don't follow me on Instagram or social media, um, I was a pole dancer for seven years. Um, and I have decided to take a break from pole. Um, I was an instructor and pole danced, um, competed, performed. Um, yeah, did all that. Um, but right now I feel like for my mental health and my just, yeah, for my mental health mostly, um, it's just best for me to take a break from all that from that world and going on IG and seeing the poll everywhere and everything like that was really triggering and it really hurt because I missed it so much. Um, I I have a poll at home, but honestly, like it's not the same, you know what I mean? And I, you know, during this transition, um, you know, uh, I really did want to focus on, um, acting and wanted to focus on building my platform. And, um, yeah, sometimes I just, because I'm, I'm a Taurus, you know, I'm hard headed, stubborn as fuck, very prideful, but also like to do lots of fucking shit. Like I like to put my foot in every single thing and that can leave me a little bit scatterbrained. And, um, you know, even my therapist, shout out to therapists out there, shout out to people going to therapy. Um, you know, my therapist will always be like, why are you doing, like, I would have like, I had like fucking like 15 jobs or some shit, you know what I mean? So, you know, my therapist was like, why? just you know get one job and focus on acting and that's it you know and I was just like no I need a poll it's super important to me I need a poll like you know and it just became my world it became my life you know and what I realized is that I was kind of forming like a unhealthy relationship with pole um if y'all don't know what the fuck I'm talking about I'm sorry pole dancing so um I'm gonna totally get into that later um in other episodes about pole because it's a very it's very much a like it's a sport, you know, and people that are, we're athletes, you know, people that are pole dancers are athletes. We train very hard and sorry, I keep touching the, f- my fucking pop filter. And so if you, you guys hear that, my bad, my first time podcasting guys. So bear with me. Um, yeah. So if you don't know about that world, I apologize. I will go deeply into that later, but it becomes, we consume our lives with it becomes like our obsession and we train very hard and we train a lot but there's ups and downs in the field, in the, in the industry. So for me personally, um, and because I wanted to focus my life and my career on being a creative person and also acting. Um, so I'm, a, I'm in Chicago, I'm an actor, and yeah, I wanted to really, really focus more on that. And I felt like Paul was just taking a lot of that, that I needed to focus on other things and building my platform and acting. So um So, yeah, so this break has been very, um, you know, it's almost like it's been like a breakup. It's really, you know, it's been tough, you know, I'll have days where I'm like, oh, my God, I really miss it, you know, you know, but then, you know, it's not like I will never come back, you know, or I'll never, you know, pole dance again. But I feel like for right now, my focus needs to be elsewhere. And I do miss my students and I do miss my friends in the pole world very, very much. Um, But for right now, I think it's just the best thing for me to do is to just have that break and to just kind of like find Kimbo again. So I felt like I was really identifying myself more as a pole dancer and losing Kimbo, losing who I was as a person, um, you know, because pole just consumes you. So um, if any of you guys have like, or are athletes out there that do basketball, softball, football, um, gymnastics, karate, Hi-ya! you know, Yoga even, you know, but yoga's great. Yoga's been saving my life because I've been doing lots of yoga outside and that's been saving my fucking life. Um, but yeah, you become, you, you become really, it becomes you, you know, but then you sort of lose your identity also. And it becomes something where like, you don't feel like you're whole unless you have it. And I was feeling that. 
you know, especially being quarantined in my house and not feeling that, you know, going and, you know, teaching classes anymore and all that stuff. I felt that void and I didn't like it. I didn't like that. I didn't feel like I was, I felt like I was losing Kimbo. I felt like I lost who I was in that sense. And I don't think that's healthy. You know, I think everything you do in life, you have to do, you have to be, you know, mindful of whether it's healthy for you, you know, whether it's going to be, you know, an asset to your life or if it's actually holding you back. And I did feel like Paul was holding me back a bit. I really do. Um, so, yeah, but that's just me. Like I said, that's just me. It's a fucking great way to work out. A bitch has been quarantined. So a bitch has been eating, cooking down. So I've been a new fucking found chef. So your girl is gaining the weight. So I definitely miss that. I would lose so many, I would lose, I don't know, a thousand calories every time I would train a day. You know, it was fucking awesome, you know, and I would just be in there for a couple hours and just calories gone because you're just moving. It's dancing, you know. So, but um, yeah, I'm trying to find other outlets right now. It's summertime here and, you know, we are social distancing still in my household, Um we are not out of the club. We're not out of the restaurants every day, the bars, all that stuff. Um, we've been cooking. We've been 90% at home. Honestly, it's just been one of those things where you have to be mindful still. You know, we're not being reckless and um, putting others in harm. And, you know, I haven't, I actually haven't tested for COVID, but I haven't had any symptoms and I haven't been sick. And um, for the most part, whenever I go outside, you know, I'm, I'm in a other, you know, restaurant or when I'm, when I'm, I'm really not at the restaurants like that. When I'm at the grocery store and all that shit, I'm wearing those masks and I'm social distancing, you know, like I am, I'm being still very mindful of that. So, um, yeah, so it's just tough. You know, we try to, um, be outdoor as be outdoors as much as possible. I love riding my bike, rollerblading. Um, again, we do yoga outside. That's really, really awesome. So staying active, but summer, winter time, your girl is scared because it's like, fuck, what am I going to do? So I got to find some different ways to, yeah, get that out there. So, um, I do miss it. So, um, if, so yeah, if you guys have been kind of curious on how I've been, and it's so funny because I love, I love y'all and I love the people that have been concerned. It's like, but when like you kind of like, what is it? Like, you know how when you're on social media and then you're like posting like, oh, I'm in love and this, this and that. And then you go off social media and then the photos of the person you love are magically gone. And it's like, oh shit, we know something happened with them. So she's taking a break from social media because she's, you know, going through a breakup or some shit. And it's like, people automatically go towards the negative and like, oh, she's not doing well you know, cause she's not on social media. We don't see, you know, I was pretty active on Instagram. I would be posting every day on my, my, whatever, my feed, you know, my lot on my, what are the, wow. Wow. I even forgot what it's fucking called on Instagram. The fucking thing where you post and they see your stories, whatever the fuck. Yeah. That shit <laughs> I would be posting all the time on my story. And, um, you know, when people don't see that, they're assuming that you're not doing well, you know, and I've had some people reach out, um, and it's not the case, you know, it's honestly not the case. I've had a wonderful, like, I'm not going to lie. I have loved COVID. I, not, oh Lord, look at me. Love COVID. Hell no, I don't love COVID. I have loved quarantine. Like I loved the process of being able to step back and reassess myself and, um, just kind of like take a breath. Cause I was always go, 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 go. Worked my many jobs, always on the run, always on the go. And quarantine focused me inward and I got a lot of time just to kind of reflect and did a lot of thinking still doing a lot of thinking but um it's been awesome you know I don't miss it but I do miss it you know what I mean but I'm not I'm not depressed you know guys so I'm not doing you know like my sister she's been kind of still in that whole world and everything and it's been like yeah she's fine she's just you know not on social media, I'm not on Instagram, you know, doesn't mean I'm suicidal. It <laughs> doesn't mean I, you know, I'm depressed. I hate myself. I hate the world. I, I'm, it's very much the opposite actually. Um, so yeah, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, I've been really good. It's been awesome. Actually, it's been great. It's been such a, like, you know, again, I don't like things that I feel like I'm not in control of, or I feel like when they take over me, and I can, I lose my identity a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit of a freak like that. I'm a hippie. Like I've, I'm a nomadic person. I've left the country and lived on couches 
you know, before. So I, I'll do that. You know, I'm just that type of bitch. So when I, and I felt like the fuck, I don't feel good going on here. So I'm not going to fucking do it. You know, like I'm not going to let this social media, the matrix control me like fuck that shit. You know, if you feel like you're having an unhealthy relationship with anything in your world and anything in your life, fucking step away. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. You know, you can reassess yourself, get back to like you, you know? So yeah. Um, okay guys. I feel like I talked a lot about that shit. Um, again, this is the first episode. So my plan is to, um, have talk about the topics, talk about what's going on in the world. This is just going to be an intro episode today, giving you guys a little bit of the structure of what you're going to be listening to every week. Um, and just kind of like the segments that I want to go over every week as well. And we're going to go, we're going to be going over like current events, current topics. Cause you know, yeah, I mean, we can't avoid it. Like I'm soups excited though. Cause now we got a vice president, a black woman vice president running. So hopefully we have a vice, a woman, a black woman as a vice president in the next coming election. That would be litty titty fitty. So I would be really, really excited to see that. So not really excited about Biden, but love that there's a black woman that's going to be possibly the vice president of the United States. That's fucking cool. So 2020 has been, you know, a bitch. She's you know, tested us down, but we can get through it. We can get through it. So, so we're going to go into our meditate, masturbate and medicate segment of the episode. Um, so today I want to talk about masturbate. <sighs> so me and my partner, this during the quarantine, we, uh, actually drove to Colorado, uh, 15 fucking hours. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really long and boring. Um, very straight edge, like going through all these fucking Trump filled states, seeing all the fucking Trump signs and stuff, driving to Kansas and Nebraska, all these fucking states. But we went to Colorado. It was fucking amazing. It was beautiful. Denver is the shit. Weed is so cheap. It's amazing. Um, but in doing so, we found this amazing, um, product. So, uh, me and my partner actually, there, so there they have, obviously there's products you can't find, um, in this, in Illinois that you can find in Denver because weed was legalized, you know, obviously medicinally, like way, 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 way back in the day before us. So, um, I found this exciting, exciting, um, you know, little tool, um, and it's a uh, lubricant with THC in it. Ooh, I know, right? Liddy titty guys for my ladies and my men, you know, out there. Um, me and my partner have really enjoyed it. Um, it is a, you know, a sexual lubricant that you can place on your genitals. And um, so shout out to the maker. It's for Foria, F-O-R-I-A. Um, and I will put the website in the show notes. Um, it is foriawellness.com. That's the website. That will tell you about it. But this specific one that I used, you can only get in California and Colorado because it has that THC in it. Um, but on their website, you can get some that have the CBD in it, um, which I will be trying. Um, but the THC was, it's where it's at. It's where it's at. We have been using it and it's been very good in the bedroom. You don't need an even, you don't even need a lot. Like it's just a tiny little dial where you just, a few drops. And I'm telling you, the effects are amazing and also very like they're right away they're like instant that you feel the effects um for my ladies that have issues with just relaxing in the bedroom just breathing and just relaxing and also just kind of getting your mind out of your you're getting your head you're getting out of your head you know um it's great it's great it totally relaxes you it relaxes your genitals and it allows you to just be relaxed so your partner can um enter you at will but also you enjoy it it's it's phenomenal um, so I will leave that in the show notes, but it's a, it's a natural arousal oil and lubricant that you, it's in a dropper and you can, again, it's totally plant-based, organic, vegan, everything. You can even eat it. So it's totally fine. If you want to eat the kitty, you know, also, you know, dome, get that dome life. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Shout out Kimbo. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at my partner. And he's like, really? Y'all, you going to talk about this? But it's been great. It's been awesome. Um, and I'm sad because, again, you can't get the THC one in Illinois. I need Illinois to get on it. 
you know, I have my medical card, but we need to have better products here. This being one of them. So, but I will be de- testing out. We'll be purchasing the one with CBD, and um, I will be giving that a go because I actually love CBD too. My body responds really well to CBD. Not everybody, but CBD and me are we're friendly. So um, I like it. So yeah, I will be giving that a shot too. But if you guys wanted to give it a shot, or if you're going to be going to California, if you live in California or in Denver. Give it a try. I really, really liked it. Um, it's not cheap. Um, so like a little like 10 milliliter dial, like little tonic or whatever you want to call it, a little dial, it, with a dropper. It's about like, it was like, I think in, I think in Denver, it was about like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, so it was, it wasn't like, you know, super cheap, but worth it. hundred percent worth it. So, and then the ones on the website, I'm looking at foriawellness.com. Um, the arousal oil with a CBD is like 48 bucks. And then there's a natural lubricant one, which is 50 bucks, which I will be purchasing one of those or both or whatever, or for wellness. If you want to send some to your girl, I'm a big fan. So holler at your girl, but anyways, give that a try. So that is today's, um, masturbate segment. So yeah, so I'll be like finding little tidbits on, um, either meditation, masturbation, or medicating yourself. And when I say medicate, I mean, weed. You know, I'm not really a big fan on like popping pills and doing all that stuff. Fuck the, you know, fuck the medical world here in, in, in America. Like, seriously, like they completely like I don't believe in the whole fucking pharmaceutical world here. It's trash. Um, go natural any way you can. Fuck all the fuck the pharmaceutical companies like they are raping us. They are fucking taking our dollars. They insurance is a fucking scam. I hate it. I think America's trash insurance is awful everywhere else in the world they it's way way better so just putting it out there we'll talk more deeply about those episodes because i am passionate about that too because i think it's fucking trash i've lived overseas so i know for a fact so yeah all right guys so yeah that was today's that um and then so yeah i'm going to end today's um episode with uh, a quote of the day as well um this quote is amazing and me and my partner started watching alone it is a show on the History Channel that is lit. It is a fucking show where they throw 10 people out in the middle of nowhere and they need to survive off the land. Like legit. They get like 10 items, right? Um, and they have to build their shelters. They have to find their own food. They have to find their own water. And basically, whoever lasts the longest in that environment wins $100,000, I believe. Yeah. Ricky's saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like $100,000, I believe. So... This quote, like they have quotes every episode. It's really, really cute. And this quote really, really spoke to my heart. So this quote is, there are no limits. There are only plateaus. And you must not stay there. You must go beyond them. And that was by Bruce Lee. Hi-ya! Shout out to Bruce Lee. Rest in peace, my dude. So yeah, that is it, guys. A little short and sweet. Just a little intro podcast. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy what I have for you guys. I will be bringing on guests on the show. Um, it'll be fun. We'll talk about all sorts of good things. Um, and I'll give you guys tips. I'm all about sharing the wealth, sharing the knowledge, um, of just everything I've picked up in this world. Um, how to save money, how to be a boss ass bitch, all that shit, all that shit, all that, all that, all that, all that. So I'm excited for this. I hope you are too. And if not, that's cool too. This is just a, this is another reason. This is another way for me to just, I guess therapy too, because I'm just like getting it out there. So it felt good to just kind of share with you guys and share with what I've been going through. And yeah. Also, I want to, you know, open up the, the communication. So, um, I will also leave, um, my email in the show notes, Kimbology podcast at gmail.com. Email me, Send me your questions, send me topics you want to talk about. I'm really, really open with that stuff. I want to form a community. So, um, yeah, shout out, shout out, you know, talk to me. I would love to hear what you guys think. So, yeah. Um, I also want to maybe, I don't know, if how, seeing how this goes, you know, maybe have some sort of like call in, voicemails, things like that. That'll be fun. I love it. I love that when I listen to podcasts. So, I want to hear from the people. Okay. I want to learn too. So, this is all about, you know, growth. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me on today's first episode of Kimbalology. Y'all be good, be well, and be safe. Peace. Kimbo out. <laughs>